Hello Internet! Today we're going to be making this thing. Uh, use rigid body physics instead of transform mod uh, modifications, which is kind of cheating. So, I, I to be honest, I, I've tried this before, I've got it working before. It can be a little finicky, uh, so there might be some tweaking that I probably won't do here. It's more going to be to get it working, and we'll see where it goes from there. But that's sort of, sort of what we're doing. So, what I want to do is uh, stop this. <laughs> and so, most of what we're going to be doing is going to be in the ship movement controller. But we're not going to be making modifications to the ship movement controller. We are going to be copying it, uh, I think. Okay, we're, we're going to pretend to copy it, and we're just going to open it and copy. <laughs> And create a ship rigid body movement controller. Continuing the trend of really long names that we've kind of had with this project. Uh, and so the idea here is we're going to re implement each of the components that we already have, all three of these movement types. Uh, we don't actually need that enum a second time, but we want the ship rigid body movement controller. And so that's going to more or less have everything the same with one extra private rigid body component. I'm going to be implementing this in 3D, so we're going to be using 3D rigid bodies. Use a rigid body 2D if you're doing 2D stuff, and then some of the other math will have to change. It'll be a little bit simpler because there's less dimensions, but eh. Uh, so rigid body, and we're, we're just going to store that there. Uh, we're going to reference to it, so. Let's say rigid body equals our rigid body. Like that. And now we have this rigid body set up. And let's do that. Uh, so rigid body exists from way back in Unity when it used to already detect a lot of these components for you and kind of load them for you. Uh, and so because of, of backwards compatibility things, that field still exists on mono behavior. And so if you just type rigid body, you're going to get a warning that you have a con conflict between the two. And so to, to explicitly say that you want a new one, you type new. This isn't creating like a, a, when you do a new object, like it's not the same as new rigid body. That's not what we're doing here. It's saying this is a new private field of type rigid body. Anyway, uh, there we go. There's all that stuff. And now we have three movement types. I am going to move the slide up. And then we can just do these in order. Uh, so the first one is slide, which goes side to side, sort of space invaders y. And so all of that is going to be modifying our rigid bodies uh, velocity. And so we just need to change the velocity instead of changing the position. Uh, so. What we're going to do here is say velocity, do we want to do plus equals? Is that a good idea? <laughs> I don't think it is, but I kind of want to. Uh, we could just set the velocity equal to whatever, or could add force. Add force is what I want. <laughs> so we have the horizontal, the right vector, the velocity, and the time delta. Previously, we were just adding that to, to the position. We can add a force instead of that same value which is going to push our, our object in that direction instead of move it instantly. Uh, so this will prevent it from going through things and also has the added benefit of adding acceleration. Uh, it will make the controls a little bit more floaty, if you, you know what I mean? Because, because it has velocity, when you let up on the controls, it's going to keep going for, for a little bit. And that, that should be it. We could collapse this into a single add force statement. I'm going to keep them separate just because that's what we have in the other one. And I'm trying to keep these kind of on par with one another. So you can kind of flip between one and be like, I understand that. What is going on here? And kind of compare the two. But if you want, you can just add a plus and remove all, all of that stuff. Should be the same. And so if I, if I did that right, <clears throat> we should be able to go into here 
remove our, well, first let's add our rigid body movement controller onto our spaceship and add the same arguments and then we can remove that old one. And that means we need a sphere collider and a rigid body. And that should be it. We're going to turn off gravity because uh, otherwise we'll just fall. And because this is a top down thing, I don't want it to rotate or I don't want it to move on the Y axis and I don't want it to rotate on the X or the Z axis. Uh, so you can only rotate on Y, so like this, and you can only go uh, on the X and Z plane. And so <clears throat> uh, we don't want to save because uh, I, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't been saving, so whatever. <laughs> Physics is working but it's very slow. We're no longer moving the entire thing, so I need to, oh, not set that to zero. Let's, let's reduce the mass a little bit, and hopefully that makes it so it can move a little bit faster. Because again, it's, it's physics, physically based, so it's going to be very uh, movement based, but our input is going to be the exact same as it was on the other one. We're just getting a very different, results and you can kind of see where we're sliding around a lot more and and it's uh spacey <clears throat> maybe more physically based but not necessarily better actually if you're doing sliding stuff probably not this and probably freeze the rotation <coughs> anyway uh now that we have that that's sort of like a, a proof of concept i guess Let's do the next one, which is rotating on one axis and then moving on the other. This one will, will not work with the way we have uh, direction calculations. The sliding one does because it just slides towards the point. This one, it takes the horizontal and actually rotates it, which means it's not always going to work. But it, it will get something, and it will let us experiment with adding torque. So we have this, which is our velocity. <clears throat> the only real difference between this and the previous one is we're using the transform forward here. And so we can just plug that in. The next thing we want is to actually do the rotation the, the, the right way, the way we're actually doing it. And so what we're doing right now is taking the Euler angle of our current position and adding some rotation amount to it. I want to take the rotation amount and add it as torque instead. Uh, so what we're going to do is do this dot rigid body, add torque. Uh, and so torque is sort of a twisting motion. It's like pulling something in one way or the other. And we, I forget how this actually works. I think we want a vector three, like this rotation amount on the y-axis and that and theoretically that's our torque i'm pretty sure pretty sure that's the kind of torque we want because it uh it, it should be the the measure of torque is going to be the amount of rotation or or spin that you're adding around a specific axis so we want to spin around the y-axis so we're going to add torque to that and got to force it around uh, and so the higher that goes the faster it should should spin and so theoretically that works. <laughs> well, I guess find out, right? If it if it rotates, then it, then it worked. And if not, then uh, then it then it didn't work. <laughs> we can also kind of tweak like the velocity, for example, to make this more sensitive. These are no longer like measures of degrees or meters. They're it's a measure of meters per second squared, the, the acceleration, not the anything else. Uh, and it's based off of the mass, too. So things get a little bit more confusing. Let's increase that. Isn't good. <laughs> it's going to knock it out of the, the way. We want to increase this. Oh. It's set to slide, manual rotation. There we go. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay. So I'm pretty sure, 
pretty sure that does prove that it is working. It also proves that uh, it doesn't it doesn't work for this. You, you like you can see it. It's it's switching as the direction of it. It's based on that x red vector there. As that rotates, it changes its direction of rotation. So it's sort of sort of working. Also, it's kind of sliding off of the screen because it, in this case, it's just spinning in circles. So whatever lot velocity it has is just canceling itself out. Uh, so maybe <laughs> maybe not worth it in in that particular example. There's probably a better way to do that. At least for our current like auto aiming thing, that doesn't really make any sense in this case. But we did it anyway. So <laughs> eh. and really the code is not like that function is right here. And now it looks like this. So it's the same number of lines and I think a little bit shorter. Yeah, a little bit shorter and uh, theoretically easier. A little bit harder to control because you're kind of dealing with forces instead of direct movement. So these forces do not necessarily translate directly into movement. It's going to be based off of the mass and other other things that are happening in the scene, which means you kind of have to tweak it a little bit more. You have to kind of try to get those numbers right. And we haven't, so it might not look great, but we're, we're getting there. <laughs> this one is a little bit harder, but most of what we've done already is happening like here with this transform position dot all of that stuff. <laughs> and so we should be able to just take that and instead of modifying this transform position, we can take all of this stuff and plug it into this add force. And at this point, the pattern should be pretty obvious. We're just kind of taking things and plugging them in. Uh, and so we've got that. Let's add our torque so we can do exactly what we did here. Plug in the rotation amount, do all of that. I think with this, I was missing a magnitude in the previous one. I'm going to keep it off, but you can see up here when we added the force from two videos ago, we had a magnitude, but we didn't apply that to the rotation. We might want to. So, so adding like another multiplication here, I think that makes sense, but I'm not going to do it right now because we haven't in the past and we're kind of trying to duplicate the thing. So if in the, in the source code, if you see that that's been modified, it's because it just felt better. Uh, and that's, that's the only reason. The only reason you would, I think, do that is so that it would uh, change its amount or, or change it so that it didn't have a, so it kind of slid up and down. So if you held left only a little bit, it, it turned to the left only a little bit instead of just flipping over towards that immediately. Both of them make sense a little bit, <laughs> but I don't, I don't really know. So yeah, uh, I'll, I'll leave that as an open question. We won't answer it here. All right, so theoretically, that should cover everything for the adaptive rotation. So we should have some kind of rigid body based thing. Uh, this is one of the, the problems <laughs> that I've had with, with this kind of movement. It's very, it's force based. And so what ends up happening is, especially with the torque and really anything, but it's kind of got this spring effect where we look at something, but we don't like look at it. We snap towards it, but because it's a torque, we snap past it and back and forth and back and forth. I wonder actually if I add that times the input direction magnitude, I wonder if that would help a little bit because it, it would, as there's less of a difference needed, it will reduce that and it will will need less of it. That might make a little bit more sense. We'll, we'll see if that actually works, but probably not actually. Nope. Uh, so we'll take that out. It was a, a worthy experiment. Uh, thinking about it a little bit more, it wouldn't actually have made any difference, but it didn't make any difference, so there we go. <laughs> uh, part of the problem is probably our rotation speed is way too high. So we can take that down to like half of what it was and increase our velocity to like 60. 
add some drag, I guess, so that it, it slows down a little bit and has a like a cap. Just kind of guessing at the values. I don't have any hard hard values in mind. Uh, but kind kind of better, uh, a little bit. At this point, it's just totally out of control. <laughs> uh, rotation. Let's increase that a bit. Velocity. Let's set you to one twenty. Yeah, this isn't helping. Okay, so the drag definitely improves the, the control of it. So probably increasing the angular drag will also get rid of some of, the, some of those stutters. And we're kind of back to where we were, which I guess is, is a good thing. Let's add another one of those and change the period to like 0.3. And five <laughs> mostly trying to get it to collide and yeah it kind kind of worked you know what there's a there's a much better way sphere cool now it should go underneath it because it's there <laughs> and now we can hit the the moon or planet or whatever and it you can see it actually works like we're actually doing collision things and it is kind of making itself work again which is good that's sort of why we did this in the first place is so like if you have an arena or or something like that or you just need to actually be able to hit things this makes it possible to do that and so yeah i guess there's there's rigid body things this is probably a lot less done than the transform modification one Again, you kind of have to play with the values to get it to work the way you want. As things change, objects get bigger or smaller, or the mass changes or whatever, you kind of have to change all the other values to make it feel right. So there's a lot more tuning to it, but it can also, once you actually start playing it, can feel a little bit better. Uh, I'm not going to try to demonstrate that here because I, the, I, I'd be playing and it wouldn't be any different than it being automated. So. <laughs> Yeah, but that's pretty much that's pretty much it. So uh, we have a Discord channel. If you guys want to come and join that and, and chat about your projects or, or ask questions about one of these projects or just come and hang out, then feel free to come and join that. It's in the description below. Uh, other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. So until then, see you, Internet.